Uh, and uh, this is a, a topic that I, I think I'm an expert in is getting into and out of trouble. Uh, and I'll show a case as an example um, that will sort of illustrate some of the key points. Uh, and, and those points are uh, principally that whenever doing an iliac occlusive case, uh, we need to be prepared uh, to manage a complication. We need to be able to properly uh, do volume resuscitation for those of us that are not surgeons. Uh, that means to, to go big uh, with your volume resuscitation and then uh, understand how to obtain hemostasis temporarily while you're de developing your plan for definitive treatment uh, with a covered stent in general. So let me start with a case. This is a, a, from a few years ago. It's a, a patient who has an extensive cardiovascular history um, who'd had claudication and came in with an acute MI and uh, was treated. And at the time of that, um, he had angiography, aortography, and runoff done uh, that demonstrated a, uh, a lesion akin to what you've been seeing from my uh, other speakers this morning. Uh, total occlusion of the left uh, common iliac with uh, high-grade disease and, and what doesn't represent well is that there's modest to moderate calcium uh, bilaterally. Uh, and this is a, an unsubtracted run where you can see uh, maybe a little bit of calcium. So I, uh, I hadn't attended Dr. Rosby's uh, lecture, but at the time um, we were also doing a sub re reentry. Uh, and you can see here we went with a retrograde approach. Perhaps I should have listened to uh, Dr. Sukas and gone from the arm, but we uh, went from a retrograde approach uh, and were sub uh, in, in multiple projections. And so uh, we used the Pioneer Plus device and were able to re-enter and then we did a soft balloon dilatation. And I think given the title of my talk, you're going to anticipate what happens next. Uh, at first it looks like we're okay, but then we, we try to go in with a right size balloon um, and, uh, and, and establish a channel, we have a perforation. So th this, at this moment, uh, the first thing to do, and whenever we do these cases, you can see here we have a long bright tip sheath um, that's been pulled back as we're doing inflation. So the bright tip that we start with is always seven French uh, for a reason, and I'll go through that in a moment. And we always leave the balloon on the wire uh, just in case, uh, because the next thing we do need to do in addition to uh, volume resuscitation is to get hemostasis. So with respect to volume resuscitation, I think one thing that we as interventional cardiologists don't do well is prepare uh, for some of these uh, potential complications by having a type and cross and blood available. And so we're frequently uh, left needing to get emergent uncrossed blood, but certainly getting crystalloid resuscitation and then having blood available relatively uh, quickly is important. So when you're doing these cases, uh, I try not to do them ad hoc, uh, and I try to make sure that we have blood available. Um, there isn't really no, any guidance on the volume that's required, but you need to, to resuscitate the patient adequately, and for those of us that are cardiologists, we, de we tend to underdo it uh, in general. Um, and then uh, there's a, a typical sort of vagal type of response, sort of almost Bezel jarish like where you get uh, blood in the retroperitoneum that causes a, a vagal response with vasodilatation and hypotension and relative bradycardia often that needs to be watched. So balloon tamponade, the first thing to do is always to get your balloon that you did your inflation with, which was hopefully right-sized, and inflate to get hemostasis. Now, in this case, after about 10 minutes of doing this and scratching our heads, uh, we were not able to seal the perforation. So the next thing is, is a covered stent. Uh, but before you do that, um, in addition to balloon tamponade of the ipsilateral limb, it's important to know your options for aortic occlusion, particularly if you're getting in trouble and you think you're going to need to go to the OR and have a friend help you. Uh, with the case. There's two uh, large balloons that are commonly used here in the United States, uh, the Coda balloon and the Reliant balloon, both used for, for endografts primarily. Um, but it's important to note that these are large bore access devices. Uh, and so if one is going to do aortic occlusion, you're going to need contralateral access that will accommodate a large bore device. Uh, and that's not always uh, uh, simple in, in these patients. So here's, in our case, uh, we, we were able to get a, uh, at the time, an ICAST stent, and you can see there's still some retrograde dissection uh, ascending the aorta, but the, the perf is not completely contained. It's a little bit hard to appreciate on this DSA, but we have some tracking of blood outside the iliac uh, going up. Uh, and so you might consider other covered stents, but so the self-expanding platforms that are available uh, that are commonly used, uh, the Vibon is probably the most common, and you have to recognize that if you call for a Vibon, they come in two different flavors. 
Uh, one is an 018 platform, and the other is the 035 platform. The 018 platform uses a smaller sheath compatibility. So you can go as small as six French for five to six millimeter Viabon, and seven to eight millimeters requires seven French if you choose the 018 platform. The 035 platform is at least one French size bigger. If you need to go bigger than that, a nine goes through a nine, a 10 and 11 goes through an 11, and a 13 goes through a 12. Um, so uh, basically one to one based on the size and diameter of the vessel. And this is critically important when you're calling in, in, a, in a panic uh, that you need a covered stent. We've already heard about the life stream. This is the size matrix just for your, uh, for your reference, but uh, the lengths go up to 58 and eight French compatible can get you up to 12. Um, and more recently is the, the VBX from Vibon. And what's really attractive about this is that um, they're uh, five to 11 millimeter nominal diameter, uh, which can be post dilated all the way up to 16. And you can get a 16 post still diameter through an eight French access. And uh, for most iliacs, an 11 through a seven uh, will get you, uh, get you uh, out of trouble. And the lengths are quite long, up to 79 millimeters. So to be truthful, uh, in this situation, had we the, uh, the VBX, we might have chosen that. Uh, device uh, at the time. Uh, you've already heard about the uh, AFX device and other uh, um, endographs that might be uh, applicable in this kind of situation, but I think it's unlikely that you would choose this in an uh, emergency kind of scenario. So here in this patient, uh, we still had persistent leak, um, and we weren't done because there was still ongoing leak. The patient was well resuscitated, uh, but we couldn't really identify where the leak was. So we uh, post-dilated the first stent and uh, caused more trouble. Uh, and then we extended the stent uh, after a balloon tamponade with another stent. Um, and uh, we still had persistent leak, as you'll see. It's a little bit hard to tell, but you can see there is ongoing leakage here. At which point we, we uh, obtained uh, um, uh, crossover. We had two balloons up in a kissing fashion to, to get aortic occlusion and then serially deflated and, and uh, upsized. Uh, so we put 11 French sheets bilaterally uh, and were able to pre-close because we were able to do it uh, relatively quickly, uh, and then uh, deployed uh, two Viabonds. You can see, so there's a uh, covered stent, a covered stent, and then a long Viabon from the aorta down in sort of a double barrel technique. And this was the final result um, after doing that. But each step required that we were prepared uh, to manage the complication. The first important step was that we used seven French initially, so uh, had we uh, the, the need, we were able to put a covered stent. Unfortunately, that wasn't enough with a balloon expandable stent, and so we had to, to go with, uh, with uh, an upsize technique and use, um, use the Viabon. I think in today's world, the VBX is a great alternative. You can, through seven French, get up to 11 millimeters in diameter, up to 79 millimeters in length, and get yourself out of trouble. Um, this patient did very well, went home first post-operative day, uh, and is still doing well. Thanks very much.